Recursion to group sum. Given an array of ints, is it possible to choose a group of some of the ints, such as the group sums to the given target? This is a classic backtracking recursion problem. Once you understand the recursive backtracking strategy in this problem, you can use the same pattern for many problems to search a space of choices. Rather than looking at the whole array, our convention is to consider the part of the array starting at index start and continuing to the end of the array. The caller can specify the whole array simply by passing start as zero. No loops are needed. The recursive calls progress down the array. Okay, so let's go over the sample cases first. So what this problem is essentially asking is that given an array and given a target sum, can we choose, um, like can we group certain ints in this array to sum up to that sum? Um, so here we can have 2 and 8, in that group 2 and 8 will sum to 10, which of course means that this is possible, so we will return true. Next, we can create 14 by grouping 2, 4, and 8 all together. This sums to 14, so we will return true. Next, we have 9. Um, of course, here you can see that no configuration of 2, 4, and 8 will sum up to 9. And this is most obvious just because 9 is odd and these are even. And of course, no sum of even numbers will result in an odd number. So of course, this will return false. So there are key, two key insights in understanding how to solve this recursively. So first, this no, the first insight is that we can simply iterate through the array by incrementing start. And so this is what um, the problem statement was talking about, in that what we can just do is that we always focus on the choice that we have at hand um, that is pointed at by our int start. And then we will continue through the array and then limit our search um, by moving start. This way we don't need to look back and just keep on considering other things because that will just create unnecessary complexities. Our next insight is that when we are on a certain index, then we have two choices. We either use the int in that index, like so, or we don't use the int that we are on. Um, so this will help us solve it recursively. So Let's actually just um, go over the first sample case, for example, um, and use a recursive tree to understand how these insights work. So, um, so, yeah, let's start. So when we, our initial call is 2, so we have the entire array 2, 4, 8, and then the sum we want to create is 10. Um, yeah, so 0 just means that we are looking at the entire array, because 0, or whatever that start indicates, means that we are um, looking at the rest of the array that starts at index start and continues forward. So when it's 0, it's index 0 here, and so on, which essentially just means the entire array. So first, we have the entire array and 10. So as it, um, our choices here, as we can see, are that looking at the first index, we can either use the int or we cannot use the int. So if we use the int, and then we, so um, our sum will be 8, because if we use 2, then the rest of the array has a sum up to 8 for it to work, right? So the rest of the array is 4 and 8, and our sum is 8 because we used 2, so we subtracted 2 from 10 to create 8. If we don't use 2, then the rest of the array is 4, 8, and then um, the sum that we were, our target sum is 10, because we did not use 2, so we do not decrement anything from the sum. Um, as you can see, once we have made that choice for that int, we will not be looking back at it, and we will just continue on with the rest of the array. This is because these are the only choices possible for that um, index, so there's no point of looking back anyways. So we might as well simplify our search by doing it this way. So next, our choices, um, again, for 4 are we use 4 or we don't use 4. So if we use 4, the rest of the array is, of course, 8. And then um, if we use 4, this target sum is now 4. Here, if we, do, um, if we don't use 4, then our target sum remains the same, so it will be 8. Um, just for simplicity's sake, I will do this. Um, so this is the target sum, just so that you can understand more clearly what I'm referring to. So next we have 4, 8, and 10. If we use 4, then our target sum 
is now 6. And the rest of the array is, of course, 8. If we do not use 4, then the rest of the array is 8 again. And the target sum is still 10 because we did not use 4. Now here, if we do use... So the rest of the array is, of course, 8. So if we do use 8, then we have nothing left in the array. And the target sum is negative 4. Here, um, if we do... If we don't use 8, then we have nothing left in the array, and our target sum is still 4. Here, if we do use 8, then we have nothing left in the array, but our target sum is 0. If our target sum is 0, that means that we successfully chose a grouping that resulted in the entire array um, becoming... Sorry, we chose a successful grouping that sums up to the target sum. So as you can see, you can see we first, so we can just follow the recursive tree. So first, we chose 2, right? So choosing 2, our target sum became 8. We did not choose 4, so our target sum still remained 8. And we chose 8 here, so our target sum became 0. So the successful grouping was 2 and 8, which of course sums up to 10. And of course, once our target sum becomes 0, that means that we chose a successful grouping, so we can just stop the entire recursion and just return true. So let's actually model that recursively. So let's start with our base case. Our base case is in that if our start equals nouns.link, then we can return false. So here, for example, if we're here, here as you can see, when we are at this point, our start value will become nums.link, hence why the rest of the array that we're looking at is empty, right? Um, and as you can see in both of these cases, once we are, um, have nothing left in the array, we can't continue recurs um, recursing forward um, because there's nothing left to look at in this particular leaf. Um, so at this point, we can just continue, we can stop that search, right? Returning false for these particular um, children, childs of this tree. And then we can just look on and search for other cases. Um, and the rest of the childs, as you can see. So this essentially just means that once we cannot search forward, continue looking with that particular grouping, we'll just stop. Um, next, we can say that if our target um, equals zero, that means that we chose a successful grouping, so we can return true. Actually, um, let's do this. We can actually just do this first, and do this later. Just because it is possible, like here, that our array is empty, um, but, and then we chose, and then we finished with our target sum being zero. So we should first check if our target sum is zero, and then um, return false if our start equals nums.length, and we are at the end. If not, once we're done with the base cases, we should write our recursion. So our recursion is, uh, we will either of course, we will continue on with the start. We're just going through the array, iterating through the array, and our numbers are the same. So we either use the um, item at start, or we don't. So if we use it, then it will be target minus nums.start. And this is what we will be continuing forward with our recursion. If not, we will be doing group sum, continuing forward, like so. But our target will remain the same, because we did not use the item at start. Or just means that if either one of these returns true, or both of these return true, then this will return true. This, is, this essentially means that if either of our calls or our searches returns true, then we know that this call and the grouping that this um, that this is called is true. So let's run that. And as you can see, that works.